Okay, yes. Okay, how, Ayush, how many how many sticks are these? Say with your mouth. Nine. Good. Tell me the spelling of nine. N I N E. Wonderful. <laughs> And the short sound of the letter I is E. E. And what starts with E? Ink. Igloo. India. ये देखो क्या है पॉन्ड के अंदर. What is this? What is this? आपको फिशी फिशी आती है क्या ना? ये भी तो टाइम आती है. ये किसको आती है? क्या? मछली रानी है जीवन उसका पानी है हल्दी गर्गी है हल्दी मर्गी है लवली लवली एक्सीलेंट स्कूल्स We've got many, many more such activities in our EduMax Learning Program. We've created a, a, an amazing learning program because we realize children are at home; they cannot come to school, and schools have the expertise to educate children. To overcome this, we've come up with an amazing program which requires minimum eye strain, which has no, uh, virtually no eye strain. Children just look for communication; they do the activities. It's a full day program. There's so much for children to do, and what the best. thing i can tell you is get a free trial version just call the number below and get a free trial version and see for yourself how amazing it is i'm sure you love it but for the first step take a free trial and we are confident that your child would love edumax as much as we have loved designing it good luck okay good morning how are you all doing okay now let's begin my dear children okay phases of expansion ever since amol took over in 2002 there has been rapid corporatization of the company the expansion rate was so high that it has even been registered in the limca book of records with the company looking at faster national as well as overseas expansion the numbers are only looking up
I think one is, of course, we'll keep uh, growing across the country as well. We see a lot of potential right now. There's a lot of potential. Uh, we're also in talks with the uh, different countries as well. So uh, Southeast Asia, Northern Africa are two countries where talks are going on, Sri Lanka as well. So we expect that uh, Brand India will, will take Brand India forward. Good evening, everyone. And thank you so much, dear parents, for joining in. Uh, this is going to be a, looking forward to a really, really good session today uh, because we are in unprecedented times. We have never seen times like this. So it's only app that we get for you, the best of educators from across the world to share what is happening in their part of the world. And we as teachers and parents can all learn from each other. We don't live in islands. We live in a single community, a global community. So today we have an amazing panel. We have from uh, California, USA, we have Catherine Goyet. She's an innovative learning consultant and she writes standards for primary grades and is a teacher as well. Uh, we have Stu Iris from Wales. Uh, he's the director of research and development and online learning. He helps schools with their digital, dig, uh, digitalization process. So he's in, the, uh, he's in a very interesting place right now. Um, then we have Dr. Jessica Redke. She's also a teacher. She's an adjunct professor. She teaches uh, college students uh, from Pennsylvania, USA. And we have Dr. Winston Sakurai, who's a, director, a school director from Kailua in Hawaii, USA. Uh, a big special welcome to all of you from India. And uh, for being here, uh, I know it's early morning for some of you and uh, Dr. Winston, it's, it's uh, I don't know if it's morning or it's night for you, but thank you so it's much. 4 a.m. right now. <laughs> 4 a.m., okay. So yes, 4 a.m. Uh, and uh, so, so parents, you should be really, consider yourself lucky, you're gonna hear from, you're gonna learn from uh, these great educators on how we can be better parents, we can be better teachers at home. So uh, straight away, I'd like to ask, uh, you know, uh, Jessica, uh, how has it been as an educator for the past three three months, and uh, what's been how has your role changed over the past three months uh, since the COVID crisis hit? Yes, thank you for having me today. I am from Pennsylvania, and I teach second grade. And in March, we changed to remote learning, and my college students that I teach in the evening also changed over to remote learning. And I have two children at home, so I was trying to instruct um, students uh, with um, my own kids being here at the house as well. So things have changed quickly. At this point, we're still waiting to hear what is going to happen uh, in the fall. Uh, things change quickly and everything changed for us quickly as well, changing over to remote learning. I had uh, 20 uh, minutes to go into my classroom and get things to bring home to start teaching online. Um, so we will have to wait and see what happens. Okay, thank you. Uh, that's a question which a lot of, um, you mentioned something being a parent as well. And a lot of parents miss out on this. Uh, they don't understand what teachers are going through because you have your own timetable for schools which need to finish or do these online classes and you have your children's timetable. So how do you, how would you suggest that, uh, you know, teachers manage this uh, because they are a teacher and a parent at the same time. So how, yes. how do you manage this, the schedule? I think um, balancing everything is really challenging for everyone. I think the most important thing is to have an open line of communication between parents and the teacher. So the parents, I know what situations they have going on in their lives, and they understand that I also have my own children here, and we can communicate with one another and remain flexible and establish a clear schedule and expectations. We cannot just assume that students know how to act during these unprecedented times, especially young learners. We need to teach them and and provide them with the skills that they need to communicate online. Uh, thank you. Uh, Dr. Winston, so how has been your past 100 days? It's, uh, it's been 
absolutely crazy since uh, uh, February. But I want to say, first of all, aloha to everybody from Hawaii. Uh, we started very early on planning uh, because we were watching what was happening in China, what was happening in Europe, and then it came to uh, United States. And we were one of the first, um, we were one of the last states to actually uh, experience COVID in the islands. And it was, it was funny because you mentioned that we're not all, all on islands. I'm actually on an island. And you so are, we're able yeah. to kind of, uh, quarantine a little bit. Uh, and we, we actually stopped all tourists coming into Hawaii. So our numbers are relatively low compared to other places in the, in the world. So like today, it was only 19 in the entire state of Hawaii. Uh, but we, we planned really early. We got supplies. Uh, one of the big things in the United States was toilet paper. We actually have a whole case of toilet paper in the schools thinking that we needed that to go through the rest of the school year. But we had to shut down in March uh, during our spring break. And uh, it was, it's pretty much 16 hour days right now, seven days a week for administrators because we are, uh, at the time we had to go into full distance learning. We came up with a plan in, in probably 48 hours. Uh, and and that, that's only because of, of talking to other educators all across the globe. We actually use the um, American School of Japan's model of how to actually do distance learning. We went immediately to Zoom uh, we trained our teachers within a week. We trained the students in the next week and did some uh, kind of, we started off with more social emotional learning, getting them comfortable with each other and being online before we even touched the academics. And I think that really helped. And so we went through two months of learning. 94% uh, of our students participated in it because our teachers are just excellent teachers. And, and what it comes out down to is that if you can prepare teachers with the technology, they will shine because they're really good teachers already. So that's actually, it actually amplifies really good teaching when you can actually give them the tools to uh, actually use it in a, in a way that's very innovative. But we've been planning. We actually are gonna open up in two weeks and uh, it is very spooky, it is very scary, scary to even think about that. Um, but it is a lot of planning, even like today, you know, in all day is gonna be talking with teachers, uh, talking with parents, trying to come up with our last uh, tweaks of our plan to social distance in the classroom, keeping everyone six feet apart, uh, thinking of how we're gonna do health screenings and temperature checks and sanitation stations and all those things that an educator never thought they would have to talk about. Um, but I think, like it says, the communication has to be open. You have to talk to one another. And we've been kind of going with this plan of uh, grace, compassion, and kindness in, in terms of all of this, because everyone's suffering through this. We're all in this together. We try to help each other out as much as possible. And I think that's what sustains us, not only as a school community, but as a, as a global society. And I think that's where uh, we're all experiencing the same thing at the same time. So we all have this shared experience and we stick together uh, during hard times. The same question, which I asked Jessica as well. So I'm sure your teachers also face the same challenge of balancing being a parent with their own children's timetables and expectations of schools to finish, do their classes during the same morning hours. So how are you helping, uh, how are, te are teachers coming to you and say, how do I manage both schedules? Uh, oh yeah, um, there are pretty much in, in our own st school, there's 26 uh, children of our staff members. So you're talking about even just within our own school and then a lot of them have older children, uh, college age children. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have two myself that are elementary age, and um, I make sure the first thing I do is lock the door when I have, go into Zoom meetings because you don't want to have any kind of uh, experiences uh, like that UK uh, uh, analyst that was in South Korea. Uh, that was the first video I played uh, for our teachers was to make sure that you know you, you, you can do these things uh, correctly, uh, but you have to have boundaries with with you know your children. But it's hard because my my daughter will knock on the door even when I'm in meetings, and and. It, as a parent, it really kills you, right? To not want to you know, be with your children and they need some help or they need some assistance. Uh, we've just been trying to be very flexible. And I tell my teacher all the time, don't worry, don't worry about this, we'll, we'll support you. Uh, it's important, I think, for administrators to really be supportive of parents at, during this time. It's not, you know, our coworkers went from, uh, you know, our colleagues as teachers and educators to, uh, colleagues that bark now and, and need diaper changing and everything else. It's, it's a whole different experience being at home and we just have to be really flexible. And I, I think that's the key to actually succeeding as, as an organization, as a school, to understand that things aren't gonna be perfect. Uh, sometimes things are gonna um, be very chaotic uh, because this is all new and, and you cannot, as, even as a minister, I can't say, okay, you gotta do this exactly the same way because we're, we're all trying to figure this out. 
And so I think flexibility, being kind to one another, giving a lot of leeway and, and just saying, do your best. And that's all we can really expect is just do your best. And I know that uh, my staff ha has risen to the occasion. I know there's teachers all across the globe who have done the same thing. And yeah. teachers should be commended uh, for taking on this challenge. They were not trained to do this. Uh, they weren't expected to do this. There was no preparation for, for them or even school administrators or any of us. And so I, I am actually really happy uh, you know, and, and proud, proud to actually stand with other kids, educators across the globe during this pandemic, being first line responders when we were on the ground in schools and now actually leading the charge for distance learning. I think uh, you know, all the panelists here, inclu and including uh, yourself, this is, this is something that we need to do is, is allow all of us uh, to work together, uh, to talk and have these conversations and really rely upon each other to make this work. Yeah, you make it sound like, you know, we've never thought that educators would behave like leading an army of you know, the decisions. And it's, it's almost, you made it sound like that. And it's pretty freakish to hear a seven-year-old, you know, tell you, shh, I have a Zoom meeting. Can you keep it down? You know, our kids are telling their parents. <laughs> and you'd never imagine, that. three months back, we couldn't imagine that a, you know, a seven-year-old kid would tell us that, can you keep it down? I have a Zoom session going on, right? I'm going to say one more thing, but isn't that amazing, right? You have children all across the globe now that know how to use technology in different ways that we never learned. So they are conferencing with each other. They're collaborating. They're working together. They're talking with the teacher. They're advocating for themselves by saying, here, I need some help. So they have to email their teacher. That's amazing. That's stuff that we never did as children. And how much more prepared, if you want to take some positive out of this, how much more prepared are they to live in a digital world because they have this experience now? My daughter, I mean, she's video conferencing with friends in, in Canada, uh, on, on the East Coast. Um, she even video and has a virtual sleepover with her friends that are just next door and down the street because this is a different way of, of living because we're all in quarantine. So it's, you know, there's some positive. They are going to be well prepared to lead us uh, as we get old and gray. And I think that's a, a thing to look at on, on the positive side. Uh, Stuart, so directly the question leads to you now. Um, has it, you, you lead digital transformations in schools. That's your role to take to uh, school. So has your job become easier or harder now that, that this has happened? Is it, is it now because the res resistance and I've, I've been doing it for, I mean, two decades now, the resistance that you face at every level, the parents want, are comfortable in the status quo. Teachers say, I see, I doing my jo job. It's great. Look at, look how happy everybody is. Why should I change? parents, school administrators, leaders, nobody wants to change. There's, there's always inertia because everybody's comfortable doing things a particular way. So has this made your life easier at least? That's a really good question. Um, I, I came from uh, a few years ago, I opened a school which had a, a very large digital footprint. Uh, the whole intention was that, that we would use a lot of technology to, 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 uh, uh, to teach. And even in a school like that, uh, I encountered exactly the kind of issues that you're talking about where um, education is very much an annual cycle, an annual delivery cycle, and it's, it's results driven, isn't it? <laughs> so um, you don't want to try something out which you think, you know, which you're not sure how it's going to work out. You, you, you need to be fairly secure that, that, your, that your efforts will be successful because you're dealing with children's lives, right? So, so you don't want to mess those up just because you had a crazy punt on some crazy new idea. Um, and I think that, that the situation we found ourselves now in the last 100 days or so has, has propelled and it's swept aside so many objections and concerns about how, whether or not we can do this and whether we have the ability or infrastructure. Uh, and just like Dr. Sekhari said, um, we, we've had no option but to adopt um, you know, ways and methods that, we, that, we, that we, we, would, we may have tried before, but not like this, you know, all in. So having said that, of course, um, the, the issues that I guess that I've dealt with in, in, in getting, getting um, the teachers that I've been helping ready um, have been a lot to do with, with the softer side of things that we've been talking about, the, the concerns about, the, um, about it going wrong, um, the concerns about their, their lives at home, their, 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 their children, because, because they're, they're managing so many things at once, we all are. Um, and the other thing is that I suppose a lot, a lot more technical issues uh, in the first few days, the first two or three weeks, uh, lots of, how do I do this? Uh, you know, what, what's the best way to do this? I don't know what tool to use. So now really we're looking at people, children and, and, and teachers have built up a, a lot of expertise in the last hundred days. And really they're asking now how to move things on. <laughs> uh, so now that they've got these skills and actually really yeah, this going surprisingly smoothly, I think children are getting taught, they're sticking to schedules, really, really important thing. Uh, the, 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 the Jessica said then uh, schedules crit critically important 
to, to everyone's well-being, I think. Um, and the fact that they're, they're, they're now finding that they're, they're, they're masters of a certain level of, of, of delivery. You know, they're, they're getting really good at using a handful of tools. And now teachers are saying to me, OK, how do I how do I automate some of my, my practice? How do, how do I get it so that I can I, I can monitor more frequently? I can measure more often. Um, I can look after different aspects of children's well-being. So I think that while these are peculiar times, they've accelerated a whole a whole bunch of tools by how many years? I mean, how many skills have we all just picked up? Um, and, and, and what's next uh, for us, where, where I am now? Uh, we'll, we, we, don't, we know we're going to start to open uh, in, in September, schools in September, but we don't know if we're going to be all back uh, at school or partly back at school. One thing's for sure, a lot of the skills that we've learned, a lot of the skills, that the, 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 the tools that we've been using are going to be used a lot more now uh, in, 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 in classroom and out of classroom. And I can imagine... I can imagine some of what we've learned, some of the online methodologies, uh, we, we're going to keep them. Uh, you know, uh, and, and I wouldn't be surprised if we had a bit more of a blend of, of some children, they can't get in, uh, but they're still in, with the, uh, in your class with you. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a bit more of that now. So, Catherine, uh, what's your take on what's, how has your 100 days been? Uh, what have you learned and how has this transition been for you? Yeah, it, uh, I see education... Um, is really kind of, it's changing forever. Um, and I agree uh, with some of what was said um, with Winston saying this, this is, uh, there are some positives in spite of all of the challenges. And so I do believe that um, there's gonna be some good things that come out of this, but I think what's been really, uh, what I've loved and I've been very impressed by is teachers stepping up and saying, I want to connect with my students. I want to make sure they're okay. And so that being um, the first thing, which I've heard some of you say as well, is so um, I really appreciated even those teachers that did not feel comfortable using technology before. I work with teachers um, all over the place. I support over 200 schools and so in different ways. And so I know some teachers that initially said, you know, I don't think I need to use this technology in the classroom. I don't know that I see a lot of value. And so they hadn't done a lot of um, personal learning with that because they didn't feel the need. But now, because they want to connect with students, because they, uh, I, I don't, at least around here, um, we don't have people join, uh, become educators for the money. <laughs> they don't, you know, in California, the cost of living is very high. That's not going to happen. They're in it because they want to connect with kids and they want to make a difference in students' lives. And so I've been very impressed with teachers um, learning these tools to do just that. And I think that's the most important thing. Um, <clears throat> I will say I have heard a lot about schedules and schedules are very difficult for myself um, on Zoom calls all the time. My husband's on Zoom calls a lot. And then we have four children under the age of 18 in the house, um, one, one of whom has special needs. And this is very difficult to make sure that they are safe, that they are still keeping up with schoolwork. And so um, I think that having flexibility is key. Um, something I talk to teachers and parents about is you need to find the time that works best for you. Um, if you hold a Zoom call only at 9 a.m., and then there's a sibling that also has a Zoom call at 9 a.m. with their teacher, then that's gonna be difficult. What if the parent is also working? Um, we have essential workers um, that are not quarantined that are still going to work, our farm workers who are still helping to provide food for us and such. And so um, maybe there's an older sibling that's taking care of them and also on a Zoom call. So um, what I tell teachers is try to have some options. Um, Pre-record, you know, record your sessions so they can watch later. Um, understand that parents may want to help but aren't sure how, aren't able to join at that specific time. And so giving them those options, maybe have morning and afternoon, but record them so that uh, kids can see them later is really helpful. So I have been impressed by teachers and what they're doing. Um, I've seen some parents that are... Um, they want to help, but again, they don't know how and they're nervous to, to admit that they don't know how. Um, and so parents, re I found that um, te teachers that say, um, here's how to use this specific tool and they make it easy for the um, parent. 
Um, they try to make it as easy as possible. Let me show you how to do this and make a pre-recorded video um, has been really helpful. And I think that um, <clears throat> I've talked to teachers that some teachers told me, well, what if we go back to school and we did all this work for nothing? And what mm -hmm. I tell them is if you record these lessons, you can give them even when let's, you know, even once we are, this is all gone. Uh, and, you know, God willing, we're back in school, 100%, everything's great again. You can use these recordings to give students to watch when they go home, to when they're not uh, with you, you know, to, to continue learning even after the school day. So I do agree that it's a definite challenge. Um, we need to be flexible. And um, I, I agree with a lot of what was said, uh, but parents reach out, teachers want to connect. They want to make a difference. Um, and teachers be flexible because parents want to support as well. These, these oh, teachers have amazing sub lesson plans when they're out in the future. <laughs> Good point. That is true. Yes. Uh, parents, if you have any questions, do write in the chat box. We can read all your messages. Uh, so if you have any questions, teachers, parents, uh, do write in the chat box. We'll try and uh, ask uh, our panel today. Uh, but um, again, Jessica, coming to you from parents' perspective, what do you think? What kind of learning should they be focusing on and um, these days? Because they are worried that the children are at home. Uh, as I shared earlier with you, um, our session starts in April in India, and we've already missed three months of the curriculum. So what kind of learning should parents be focusing on? Where and the, the children can't go out, they're stuck inside. I mean, how much of us, you know, uh, how much actually curriculum should we be focusing on? Or is there, is there something else that children should be focusing on these days? just to keep them happy, focused, and uh, or even just a schedule for them? I think that's a great question. I know for me as a teacher, when things change to online, the first thing I thought about were like, I wonder how my students are doing. How are the families doing? So I wanted to connect with them and hear from them. So please communicate and share what's going on with the teachers, because as teachers, we have to differentiate um, not only the content that we share with you, but how we communicate to you. So different families have different situations. And as I've connected with different families, I've learned that some parents are in the medical field and they're working all of the time and the kid has to be very independent in the time and um, the way that they're completing their online work. And then I have other students whose parents are now available to sit beside the student and give the student more guidance. And so as teachers, we have to find ways to make sure that we provide instruction for the student who has to be very independent with a lot of like recordings and directions, and then also provide things for the families who want extra work um, because they're able to provide more time with their students. Um, but as a parent, the most important thing that you can do um, in addition to communicating with the teachers and um, connecting with the school to be on the same page, because we're in this together. Um, the other thing that is the most important thing for you to do is to just be that safe place for your own child right now. Um, they're experiencing a lot and they need to be able to communicate with you. And it can be overwhelming for us to deal with so much and everything, but just embrace this as a gift of time that you get to spend with your child. Before you know it, they're going to be older and hopefully they still come back and um, are a part of your life, right? And so you'll want to go back to this time where everything stopped in the world and you got to spend that time with your child, you know, and um, just really embrace that and make the most of it. And um, use resources to teach your student how to be a digital citizen and communicate effectively online before they start using the content um, and everything like that. We just assume students can do a video conference, but if they have not explicitly um, learned how to do that, then 
why should we assume that they know how to use a chat box? Or why should we assume that they know how to act and use manners during um, a video conference? So I created um, a video conference with robots that we coded to interact to show ways that you should not interact during a video conference. I have a link to that on my remote learning website um, that you're welcome to show to your own children if you want to help prepare them for what it's like to be a digital citizen in the classroom and help them develop those um, skills. And then you can um, look at connecting with your teacher too to find out which content areas you can build on at home. Thank you. Uh, Winston, what's your uh, suggestion for parents who are concerned about their children's learning? Yeah. Um you know, we're shifting from this traditional method of educating to now the online method of ed education. And what we're seeing is that some students who were successful in traditional are not as successful in maybe online, but we're also seeing the opposite, right? We're seeing some students that didn't want to come to school, didn't want to participate, and they're thriving in an online environment. Uh, and, and what that shows to us is something that we always knew as educators that you have to really differentiate uh, the instruction in order to meet the needs of individual students. So if the online education is not working per se in, in that format, we need to find ways to engage students in different ways. So it might mean that uh, it's a lot more reading and reading is, is very important for the younger students. If they can read more um, and, and they can engage that way in learning, that's a good way of doing it. For the older students, it might just be writing, taking the time to journal, to take the time to do certain things. For, for those who are thriving in this online environment, let them produce their own videos. Let them do things that will teach other students. And actually what I found is that um, sometimes uh, children will listen to their peers more than the adults or the teachers. So that's a way to actually engage and harness the power of your classroom in order for students to share out things because they might actually, uh, because it takes so much effort and time to prepare a lesson, as we all know as teachers, having the students do the same thing to teach their peers, and then they're gonna be so proud to show it to other people, uh, especially you know, their friends, and their friends are gonna watch it, and they're gonna learn something from that. So there's different ways of harnessing the power of students, and, and it's wonderful because they, they are actually wanting to learn. I don't think there's any child that doesn't wanna learn. I think they are sometimes uh, put up, we put, sometimes put up obstacles be saying that there has to be one way for a student to learn. And that's, that's really, the I think, the key to success here uh, in the online world. It's the same key to success in the traditional education. Provide different means for students to engage in their learning, find things that they're passionate about, uh, do maybe some project-based learning, uh, do some things that are more traditional in, in case a student succeeds in a traditional way, and really push them and try to find out what is something that they are going to be able to be success, successful for, because that's the end goal at this whole point. They want, we want them to be successful. We want them to be confident. We want them to actually uh, want to engage in their learning. Uh, and we as educators can facilitate that process if we can unlock, unlock those keys. Yes, I think uh, that's something that we also noticed because we started off with a particular, a single model of distance learning. And then we realized that every family is different and every home is different. So um, just like Jessica talked about the recording part. So let's, so we started having a mixture of uh, recorded like, sessions, live sessions, one-to-one uh, -one sessions, large group sessions. And we made a kind of a buffet of options which fair, uh, families could pick and choose from as per their convenience. So if you're not, because um, we have a situation in India where the, there's a device hierarchy so if it's a family, the first the father gets the device, then it's a mother gets a device, then the oldest boy gets it, then the, then the girls get it later on, and then the age, age and sex both determine how... Mm -hmm. So some there were kids who were at the bottom of this poor hierarchy, and uh, so, so for them, a uh, scheduled lecture may not work. So maybe, so we had staggered classes as well, so that morning, evening, even late evening, we had some classes, even now, for example, during the session, pretty late for parents who come home from work and children do not have access to a device. And ultimately we had to let it open and let families choose what works for them because there's the, there was no one size fits all that we realized. We started off with the, the obvious thing, okay, let's have uh, live classes and record them. But then we realized that it's not gonna work for everybody if, if you want everybody to be engaged. And of course there are parents who still feel that, uh, still are not concerned about the role of technology. They don't understand or, or they feel it's it's going to be a, two, a few like teachers also parents also feeling it's a, it's a matter of a couple of months and it go away but we realize that may not be a couple of months it may be longer as well so Stuart uh, I just want to come to you with that question on technology and uh, 
how should parents look at technology because uh, clearly just giving a device to a child and expecting him to learn on their own is not going to happen they would be if you check out 15 minutes they'll be either playing fortnite on their phones they would have right we can't expect them to so how, how do you suggest parents so what kind of structure should they give or to help children really use technology because right now the only way for, to communicate with the outside world is technology and uh, so what's what's your recommendation for parents especially about tech tech it's a it's a really good point isn't it it's a bit of a double edged sword you 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 got this this uh, never before in in the history of the world have we had the access to everything that the human race has ever learned uh, easily accessible uh, at the other end of a digital device which fits in your pocket uh, and most of the time students prefer to use it for snacking <laughs> for for, uh, for playing a game uh, of course um, and and parents are under enough pressure aren't they to 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 uh, as as we've all said families are under a pressure to to uh, uh, to, to, to try and do the right thing and make sure that their children are, are, are well catered for. Um, um, I, think, I think from parents' point of view, um, uh, I think that you need to be able to manage the, 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 the amount of time that, that, that your student spends on a device, which is just for, just for play, but then also accept that they, they do need to play. Right? Children do need to play. Uh, and the rules about play are, are changing just like everything else. Uh, you know, many children are confined uh, to indoors and cannot go outside. They're going to need decompression time. They're going to want to play. Of course, um, you, 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 need, you need to strike a balance between access to games they want to play and, and access to things that they should be doing as well. And that's, I guess, that's the tricky uh, bit. But um, a lot of what we've what we've been saying all, 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 all evening so far is, is that uh, teachers have got a lot of this covered. You know, uh, you know, you, you're, you're, uh, a lot of children are well catered for with what teachers have already been uh, giving them. And actually. Um, from, from, from that point of view, um, the students are, um, I, I think Winston uh, said a point that I want to pick up on. Um, a lot of children that, 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 that we've been teaching, we've seen a similar thing to you. Um, children are more likely now to be asking questions they may not have raised in a class full of their, their peers um, and, and more likely to come up with things that we didn't expect them to. They're starting to, to benefit from, from this environment in a way that you might not have expected. So to a certain extent, uh, um, parents can also relieve themselves of some of that anxiety. Are the children okay? Look, children are the most resilient things in the world. I mean, nothing's like a child. You know, they, they, can, they can come up with anything. You know? We're all going through this peculiar time. Help your children. Help your children by, by making sure that they get some time away from the screen, of course, and open a book. This is a, a golden opportunity. Spend some time with you. you know, that, that's, that's what they know more than anything in the whole wide world. And then the rest of the time, just, just look over their shoulder, check that they are indeed um, you know, uh, talking to their teachers. Speak to the teachers, just, 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 just as, as we've all been saying, uh, Jessica, Catherine, you both made that point really, really well. Uh, the teachers are, 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 you know, we live for this, don't we? We're, we're desperate to know how our children are. We're desperate to know how the families are. Speak to the teachers, just check that, that they're happy with, with, with where, where your children are. They probably are, and they'll probably surprise you too with stories that you didn't know you were, your children were doing more than maybe you think. So, so in many ways, as Winston said as well, this is this is a peculiar time. Um, a, a time it's, a, it's a hard time, an awful time, but also a time of opportunity. Your children are taking that opportunity by and large. They are more than you think, uh, and, and and we we almost we must try, try to see that too. Try to remain positive. Good will come from this. Um, hard times, they're like that, aren't they? Good will come from this. And your children are beginning to benefit in ways that you haven't yet seen. Just, just check they're okay. <laughs> Talk to them. So, Catherine, what's your suggestion for parents uh, to ensure that the children keep learning? What, what steps uh, can you recommend to them? What, what do you tell your parents in your schools? I mean, one thing is very, very clear that's been coming out again and again that let's uh, keep in touch with your teachers and um, and it's okay to say I don't know can you help me I think parents need to understand that and we as educators are okay to hear that and we'll that yes uh, because this is very new for parents because um, earlier the role of a parent especially the fathers were they would come home at 6 30 7 o'clock play with their kids for a, about an hour and then put them to sleep and then rush off to office in the morning the kids would go to their schools daycares have tutors coming in or whatever extra classes they would go to they had their own they had the whole schedule. Now it's all broken, right? Now you're 24 seven parents and you're supposed to be a teacher as well. So what's your uh, suggestion for, uh, for parents in this environment? Yes, um, it's, it, it, we've heard a lot around here of um, parents saying, wow, I didn't realize what this was like for teachers. 
Um, oh. It is not easy to always uh, motivate students to want to learn all day. <laughs> and so something that I think parents um, need to understand is breaks are important. Um, you know, I remember my, uh, one of my daughters was, was doing some work and I could just feel she was getting really frustrated. Uh, I could see it in her face. And I said, I'd like you to take a two minute break, two minutes, do whatever you want for two minutes. You can get a snack, you can go play a game, but only two minutes. And then we're going to come back to it. And she came back refreshed, you know, even as adults, we need to look away from the screen. Sometimes we need to um, take a moment for ourselves. And so I think it's important to give our kids those opportunities to get up and walk around. Um, they, you know, we're talking, we've heard about Zoom fatigue. <laughs> um, staring at a screen can get, can get a little, uh, ex it's exhausting. Um, and so <clears throat> I think allowing them that time to look away and do something they enjoy is important. I really like what um, Winston and Stuart were talking as well about um, giving kids options uh, in things they enjoy. So I believe that success breeds success. Um, if your child is um, frustrated, um, maybe reading is difficult for them and um, it's difficult for them to write a paragraph because that's a challenge for them. Read it to them and then it say, you know, draw a picture first. Maybe they really like art or as, as Winston said, make a video and then it's gonna be easier for you to write and guess what, you'll be more motivated. So we've had a lot of struggles with motivation um, uh, with the students that are here um, in our area. And I think it's, um, it's when the teachers and the parents understand that giving options is very helpful during this time, now the kids want to learn. Now the kids say, oh, I can make a video. I love making videos. Oh, I can, um, draw a picture and then write next to my picture. Now I want to do that if I, if I love art. So I think those, you know, giving your kids those options is really helpful. Also, um, I know that I've heard uh, from Jessica and um, I think from everyone about the importance of reading. Let them read what they want on their, on their time. Um, you know, maybe your teacher's asking you to read this, but once you read this, you get to choose the next thing that you read. And here are some options for that. Um, that really is, is motivating for kids um, as well. And have them go outside and look around and notice things. Write a poem or maybe you don't like poetry, draw a picture of what you see. Um, it's important to have them go outside even in the backyard um, and, and do those things too. So those breaks are really important and giving them options and choices and be open with your, uh, with the par parents, be open with the teacher. Say, you know, I find that it's difficult for them to concentrate on this. What do you suggest? I find that they really enjoy drawing. Can they draw a picture for you and then do this work? Is that okay? Can I send this to, uh, to you? So um, I tell uh, parents and teachers, get them off the screens and getting, showing them their, uh, showing their learning in a different way. You could take a picture of it and send it to the teacher digitally. You know, um, so yeah, options and breaks, I think are really helpful. That's very, uh, very interesting because that's the same uh, thing we're all talking about. The learning doesn't have to be in the same traditional, you have to know your writing, reading if, and especially times like this when uh, motivation, as you said, is very, very important. And if you keep forcing kids to do what they don't want, it, it makes everybody's role, uh, hard for the kids as well and hard for everybody and uh, if you focus on what they enjoy let them build on those strengths because that that comes easily it's it makes it less stressful of parents who are worried about their own uh, careers and jobs and businesses which are it makes it a, a so let's not get fixated with my child needs to know abc everything before um, it's okay if he's okay with this part and that's uh, and taking a break also very interestingly that's uh, it's a, and that's what real life learning is about right that's how we deal with challenges in our workplace we take up. So if they're learning these skill sets at home, I mean, they're actually accelerating the learning process, some things which they would not learn in through school, college, and when they get out of the real world, because everyone's, everything is so structured for them. And now they, now this uh, parents are not at home, they're supposed to be responsible for their own learning. And 
So I think that's very key. It's, it's, uh, and Stuart, you mentioned that the parents need to have a look over their shoulder from time to time, be there, uh, be in their world. I mean, that's an, you as a parent, you have to take that responsibility. It is your children. And, and Catherine, very interestingly, also you mentioned that uh, when parents saying that how, uh, and that's something teachers have told me so much. So many parents have called up teachers and said, how do you manage 35 of them? We can't even manage one or two. <laughs> you're, you're, you're getting them to love, not only manage them, but uh, getting them to learn. So that's been uh, something. So uh, Catherine, I'll, I'll go back to you only now. Let's uh, change the order. Uh, what's your suggestion for teachers? Because now teachers, they were, we as teachers, we were taught, uh, we were trained to teach in a particular way in a classroom where with the, with the kids in front of us. And you talked about motivation. That's why I wanted to come straight to you. Uh, we had the initial months, weeks were very chaotic, especially when uh, kids would run off the would not sit in front of the cam, uh, camera teachers would have to say mute your thing or unmute yourself uh, teachers were taking attendance every 15 minutes i heard that i'm hearing stories of kids opening a netflix window next to their zoom window uh, so as a teacher how how am i is it a, how do i adopt to this new way of just because i was in charge of children automatically made me in charge of home learning which is difficult right so as, as teachers, what suggestions would you have uh, for them to become better teachers? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, teachers do know how to, I tell teachers, you know how to teach in a physical classroom. And there's things that you do in the classroom that you, it's second nature and you forget about. Uh, if you notice kids are starting to um, get off task or, or uh, zone out, daydream, all of a sudden you might, try to re-engage them by uh, having them talk to a neighbor about what they learned. You may say, uh, I'd like you to take a note on this. Tell me what you, write down what you thought about what we just said. And so teachers do that all the time, but they, they forget because they don't plan that. It just happens in the classroom. And so what I tell them is those things that you do in the classroom, plan to do those on a video call. So for example, um, I say you use a lot of our teachers use whiteboards in the classroom. So the kids individual whiteboards. And if you don't have individual whiteboards, you can get sheet protectors and put a piece of paper on it. Um, whiteboards are nice for video calls because regular papers hard to see there's not as much contrast. So I tell teachers, you ask the kids a question, ask them to write maybe a math problem, maybe uh, uh, younger kids write a word, write a letter, um, older kids, you know, uh, answer a question, um, maybe it's even just a, a choice, A, B, C, or D, and show it on the screen. So there's two things this helps with. Number one, I have to pay attention because I know my teacher's gonna ask me to show something. And number two, I have to actually stop and think, and then I have to look away from the screen for a moment to write. And so I am helping to engage students and, and have some accountability for thinking, and I'm also having them look away from the screen because it's exhausting to just yeah. stare at a screen. So um, that's really helpful with older kids too, rather than doing the, um, you know, the, the whiteboards, uh, have them take some notes as you're teaching. If you're doing a video call, don't be afraid of silence. It feels awkward to give kids time to think and do something, but it works. So asking kids right now, I would like you to stop, go to your paper and answer this question. And then when they're done, they can take a picture of that paper and submit it digi digitally. So we have found um, teachers I've talked to that have tried this has, have said it has changed everything. All of, the t all of a sudden the students know this is more of an interaction. It's not my teacher just talking at me. Um, and so that can be really helpful um, when you are doing a video call, even if it's pre-recorded. If you pre-record something, telling the kids, I'd like you to stop, think, pause the video, and write something down. And you're going to turn it into me later by taking a picture. So we've found that that's extremely helpful. And it also helps the teacher to then know what are the students struggling with? What are they doing well at? So I know how to change my instruction accordingly to support those kids. Thank you. Really good tips for teachers, I guess. Because that's one of the concerns of parents is also about the eye strain. And so I think teachers need to understand that A, uh, the more you make it interactive, it's not just about engagement. It's also 
keeps them happy because they need to connect with human beings outside their parents. I mean, they, so that that gives them a feeling if uh, that you know I'm I'm talking to a human being and the person in front of me is a real person and not just otherwise you could just watch a YouTube video of, to learn a concept, right? Um, uh, Dr. Winston, what's your suggestion for for your teachers and because you've been leading a large number of teachers in your schools, right? I have to write down this whiteboard uh, tip. This is the terrific tip. I actually going to steal yeah. the idea, which is really what my first thing for teachers is: is don't feel like you're the only ones going through this process. Uh, if you have, if you don't already have your own professional learning network, your PLN, uh, please go and find one. And 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 uh, social media is a great way of doing that. So if you're on Twitter or you're in Facebook, there are so many groups out there uh, that can share, uh, you know, different information, teaching techniques. Uh, Go ahead, go ahead and copy those because it doesn't matter who started it. It's actually how you deliver it for your, for the best uh, education for your students. So make sure that you have connections. Make sure you talk to uh, other people. I, I think with with social media, especially, we know that this is so fatiguing going through distance learning. Uh, if you can come up with a, a group of friends that you can even zoom with or even chat with, uh, commiserate with and just maybe even vent about your administrator sometimes. It's really good to have those kind of friends because uh, you know you have to sustain yourself as well. And, and teachers cannot, um, they can only give so much, right? They can only give so much. And so you have to make sure you take care of yourself. It's putting them on that oxygen mask uh, when you're in the airplane first and take care of yourself first so you can take care of others. And I, I, I think that's really important, but yeah, don't be afraid to uh, take other people's ideas and run with it because that's actually how we're all going to get better as a group. And, and with technology, especially nowadays, there are so many things that we can borrow, uh, use, refine, and make, make really good for our students. So that's probably my best tip for uh, teachers that, that uh, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Uh, there's wheels out there that you can find and, and put onto your, uh, put onto your uh, a car and move forward uh, together. So I, I really, uh, I, I'm actually going to take the whiteboard and I'm going to share that with my teachers as soon as I can. Yes, I think, please do. <laughs> I think that's a good thing about being in this education sector. And I've always loved this, that we are very open and we're actually very happy that if another teacher takes that and uses it in our classroom, we don't need to be acknowledged as teachers, right? I think that's what makes this sector very, uh, unlike other if I can use industries where nobody would be, if you were representing a particular company, you would not be sharing what you do and you'll have to, because it's not actually allowed or it's even ethical to do that. But in education, we're so fortunate that we can come on social media and say, this is what I do. And that's why other industries would not do these kind of webinars. And India, uh, educators would, because they're happy to share and make Catherine really happy if uh, it's just somebody comes and say, oh, you know what? My director gave me this and I think it came from you. and she said, oh, yeah, yeah, thanks so much. I mean, she, that's how we are. And that's the best thing. I think the, the second fact tip that you gave that be join communities are because everybody, and you can just, I think teachers were there watching on social media. You can see we're all in this together. We're facing the same kind of challenges with our families, with technology, with access, with, it's the same. So the more you kind of start networking and people who are going through the same challenges, the same uh, as you are. I mean, you, you'll feel much better. And of course, there'll be things that you can always learn from each other. So uh, Stuart, what, what kind of uh, applications are, are really working very well in which you would, could you give some tips on certain applications that uh, teachers could use for better, we're all talking about communication. So it could be communication or anything that is top of the mind that you feel that every teacher should use this. Is there something that you would like to suggest? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm probably just going to tell everyone things you absolutely know because uh, because after 100 days, uh, everyone's tried a lot of stuff, right? But obviously, uh, uh, I've used Office 365 uh, and um, Teams, uh, amazing. Teams are fantastic for, for, for dragging lots of information together and keeping groups together. Uh, Google Classroom, obviously incredible, uh, and, and Google Meet has been fantastic as well. Um, and then there's a whole bunch of, of, of uh, there's, there's so much fantastic educational technology out there that, that, that's currently discounted or free for you to try out, to, to, to have a go. If you haven't already, most people have heard of Quizlet maybe. Uh, Quizlet is incredible. You don't have to be a teacher even, just just, just uh, to make your own revision cards uh, to, to, to check out if you're, if you're, if you're a kid or, or, or an adult and you just want to learn something. You know, a really nice application to try. Um, that leads on to something called quizzes, uh, which, which I, I just come across uh, a few days ago. Quizzes, uh, a, a bit like Quizlet, uh, but, but free. Quizzes is Q U I Z, uh, has 
It's got spelling uh, or something, right? I Z I double Z, I believe. Yeah. Z yeah, that's that's a pretty it's really pretty cool. <laughs> I haven't played with it, but it looks really cool. So I'm going to play with it over the next few days. I hope you found out a day or two ago. Flipgrid for, for, for tiny videos. If you've not come across videos, every, kids love videos. And Flipgrid is nice because they're kind of curating the safe, safe place to make little, little videos for your group and your class. Um, it's, it's almost like snack videos, like uh, a minute or so. Um, although you can cater up to, up to 10 minute videos. Flipgrid's uh, really, really, really cool. Explain everything if you haven't used it on, on, on an on a, on a iOS device. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a fantastic presentation piece of software to pull things in. There are thousands. If you're a teacher, check out things like Century at the moment, automated, um, semi-automated marking system to help you uh, um, uh, you know, accelerate some of your, your, your children's learning by spotting gaps in the knowledge you may not have picked up yourself. They're, they're free currently, but, but, but not in future. Just, just <laughs> Twitter, you know, I mean, <laughs> just like, just like everyone's been saying, get on, if you're a teacher, get on Twitter, fellow ed tech. There are teachers piling in with their fabulous ideas, desperate to help each other out and, and to learn from each other. And um, just as a tip, just, just uh, everything that, that everyone said has been bang on exactly what I would have uh, suggested. As a teacher, don't try to do everything. You know, if, you, if you've got that 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 uh, that hour with your children, when you teach, you would not get up and talk for one hour. You you, you, <laughs> you know, they'd be really exhausted. Of course, you don't. You break it down. You need to do the same thing. And, and, and just like everyone said, just like Catherine said, just like Winter said, step away. Uh, you know, give your children a task to do, and they say, "We'll meet back here. We'll meet back in this meet, this Google Meet at this time. I'll see you there." kids want to go off and do something and then they got a deadline they know that they want to show something at the end of that time that's a really cool thing to be able to do break your own time up as well it, it, it will help you to step away i don't know um i don't know what everyone else thinks i found that online teaching seems to take more energy maybe than, than, than or you need to transmit more energies than, than you do in the classroom and and because you seem boring if you use the same amount <laughs> of energy as you did face to face so, uh, so bear that in mind that you're going to burn twice as bright, aren't you, during, during your, your time with the children. So take a moment, do, by all means, 10 minutes of, you know, and then, you know, see you back in 10 minutes and then go and do something else. And most of all, like I said, Twitter, Twitter is amazing. Uh, and teachers are great at sharing. Thanks. Thank you so much. I mean, like less than four minutes you give, you, you almost give a full ed tech lecture of what we will learn in one quarter. So the, so really good resources as uh, Stuart's shared. I've, I've put them in the chat so you can ch do, do check them out. I also shared um, uh, Dr. Redke's blog that is Redke's resources or blogspot. That's the one, right? You were mentioning? Yes, so yes. I've shared that link. Please uh, do check it out if you... So we've got some great tips from everybody. And uh, I think um, Dr. Jessica, I'll, I'll come back now to you as well. So what's your session for uh, as a teacher now? What, what practical suggestions would you give to handle this new normal for them now. Because I think we, the most, yeah. We might be entering into a segment where the expectations, if, if because there are good things that are coming out of it, Winston, Dr. Winston talked about them as well, that they are positives and we're all talking about them. So we may emerge, if this continues for a bit longer, uh, we may emerge with a hybrid model of teaching, which may become the new normal, right? I mean, we may be okay with some lectures recorded, pre-recorded, and why come to class for that? for this, this topic, we could just, so, so is there something that they should now take it up as part of their job, which is going to go forward? Do you see that happening? I think as teachers, we always have to remember what we have to teach. We have to be intentional about what we have to teach and we have flexibility in how we teach that to our students. And that's what makes us a professional. And that's what makes it that you just do not learn just from a YouTube video. You're learning from someone who's taking into account your child and um, adapting the educational experience that your child is receiving. And so one of the ways that we do that is thinking about um, using technology in intentional ways um, with our students so they can interact and engage with us along the way. We do not want to just use technology because we feel like we have to because we're teaching online now. We need to use the appropriate things with our students and things that you can use in um, a universal way. If you teach the students how 
how to use something, they can use it for all of like different lessons that you have. So you do not want to fall into this trap of just teaching technology. Um, now we're going to use this, and now we're going to use this, and now we're going to use this, and making students just constantly learning new things. Um, instead, it's better to find things that um, like Nearpod or um, you know Pear Deck in which which you can make your PowerPoint presentation interactive. You can use voice recording so students can actually hear their teacher talking and see you teaching along the way. And you can um, build in features where they are answering questions um, as you are asking things to them and prompting them to interact with you. And you want to give students time to interact with one another. So one of the things you said would be um, using Flipgrid. I love using Flipgrid because it allows my students to interact with one another and respond and listen to one another's voices. And so I have found that has been wonderful in the accountability piece. Students feel more engaged because they know that um, this project that they worked on and they're sharing, um, their parents will see it, their teacher, but all of their classmates will see this too and respond to them and interact along the way. And I think that is so important. Um, we also need to find ways to get students up and moving and responding to what they're learning. So if we know what students need to learn, we can adjust how they can learn that. So I was teaching measurement. So I told the families to get their students to go outside and use sidewalk chalk and measure things um, and like take pictures and make videos and share those in Flipgrid. Also, we do digital scavenger hunts um, using like Flip Hunts, which is a uh, way that you can use Flipgrids to create scavenger hunts with your students. And escape rooms are fun and engaging as well. So we used a lot of breakout experiences, just taking the content in which you have to teach, but providing different ways to teach it to your students. And I think that that's just a best practice, whether you're teaching remotely or you're teaching in person, um, we need to take these strategies and just apply them and remember to stay intentional in our practices. I think that, that's a really, really good point because that it's, it's about the pedagogy and the learning is first and not technology, just because we have a particular piece of technology with us, we should not try and say, okay, where do I fit this technology in my, in my class? If we should start with first, what do I want to achieve? And then see what works the other. That's a better way of approach rather than we start with, okay, what are the features that this Zoom application has and I need to you know, get to use them. So I think that's a really, really good point. So um, thank you so much. I think we've, um, we've had an amazing discussion and I think, uh, what we've learned is uh, the communication is important at all levels, whether it's for between parents and teachers, parents and their children, as Stuart said, and uh, everyone needs to communicate because in IT, we miss the IC. The C is very, very important, right? The IC, it's not just IT, it's ICT. And let's not forget that C is the purpose of IT. And if we can use that properly, uh, we'll have, we'll have, it'll make it much, much easier for our families, for our teachers and uh, for our children. So. Uh, like you do all just have some final suggestions and tips for, that you like to finally wind up with. Like to start with you, Dr. Winston, what would you like to uh, finally just, what's been your key learning for today for you as well as a, as a learner and what suggestions would you like to give everybody? For? Yeah, I, I, I've taken a lot of ideas from everybody. I, I think uh, your panel here is uh, <laughs> wonderful. This is a great uh, group of educators that we have uh, gathered here tonight. Uh, I, I think, uh, you know, make sure that, that um, you know, as you have expectations for your children, we all have hopes and dreams for our, 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 our young ones. Um, those dreams are, are alive and well. And so this is uh, just maybe a little bump in the road, not something we expected, uh, but I know each and every one of uh, the students that, uh, you know, that, you know, you teach and you touch uh, the, the parents that have uh, young ones that worry about the future, they are gonna be terrific. Uh, they're going to be better than than we are, and so I, I think there's a lot of hope still still left in, in the world. And uh, even though it's a tough time, uh, let's let's remain positive. Let's keep going. Let's move forward. Uh, your children need you the most right now to stay and have have positive thoughts as well. 
uh, we shape their attitudes going forward. And we want, uh, uh, we want children that are hopeful. We want children that look to the future, that see the possible rather than the impossible. And this, will, this too will pass. This too will pass. And so I know it's very difficult. It's, they're very difficult mentally on all of us. Uh, but stay focused on, on your children. Uh, look into their eyes and see what the future holds. And everything is going to be great. Everything's going to be great. And uh, we, we'll rem reminisce of the, the time we all went through COVID 20 years from now as we're old and gray. And we look, uh, look forward to uh, seeing our young ones take over the world. Thank you. Stuart, any final words from you? Well, I'll, I'll uh, uh, echo what Mr. said. Amazing, <laughs> spot on, of course, uh, absolutely. Take, 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 use what what's here in this moment. Actually, it's an incredible time um, to to link with people you never would have. Usually, we live in a bubble of the people around us all the time, don't we? We go to school, we work with those people, we come home. Now, there's an opportunity to to work with people from all over the world and for students. To, 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 to heal some of the division that we see in our own societies by linking with people from all over the world. It's actually, it's actually there's, a, there's a huge positive here, uh, which has been presented to, to us. Sometimes the best gifts are not beautifully wrapped, and this one is peculiar, but there's plenty for us to gather from here. So, so, so look for the good in this moment. There, there, there's plenty for us all to share. Jessica, any final words from you? I think that this is just really a time that, yes, we have to be apart, but we are all really growing together. And we have to remember to take those moments to continue to connect and just make the most of this opportunity that we have to make a positive impact for our own kids and for the students that we're lucky enough to work with and the families. And just remembering that we're all in this together and just um, being flexible and supportive of one another and just being hopeful, like you have said, um, it's really exciting um, what things these students are going to be able to do in the future now that they have learned that they can leverage technology to do things instead of just passively receiving information from oh. technology. Thank you. Catherine, final words from you. Um, I would say, uh, you know, take, take notice of how you are doing um, as an educator, as a parent. Um, take the time to take a breath and, uh, Commend yourself for, for being here and for wanting to do what's best um, and know that we're all in this together, as was said, and we're all moving forward. But take that time to thank yourself and have gratitude um, for the fact that you are wanting to do what's best. Um, and that alone is going to help you make a difference. Uh, it is not necessary that we jump into this and um, learn everything and, and master this new way of living and learning right away. Um, it is the process that is going to teach us. And it is, um, you know, give yourself some grace um, within this and know that, again, I love what everyone said, that we will all emerge from this better. Um, but sometimes it's hard to see that. So trust the process and um, give yourself grace in all of that. Yes, thank you. So lovely words from our panelists. Uh, make the most of it, look at it with positivity. We will come out stronger and better out of, out of this. And after it, right now it looks horrible, but after 20 years, you'll think about this as the time we got to spend with our children in that was never possible before. And a small bump in the road, I think it looked like a small bump in the road after 20 years. So right now we're in the middle of it, but there's, there's plenty of hope and positivity from this uh, panel discussion. I, and thank you so much for coming and joining and helping our parents and helping our teachers. Uh, a big, big thank you from all of us in South Asia to, to these wonderful educators. Uh, do keep in touch uh, from Shemrock and Shemfer Group of Schools. You have a friend in India anytime, any, anywhere, you, any connection you would like to have with our students, uh, our doors are always open because we really, really thank you for, for what you've done today. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. Wow.
Ayush, how many sticks? Okay, yes. Okay, Ayush, how many how many sticks are these? Say with your mouth. Nine. Good. Tell me the spelling of nine. N I N E. Wonderful. <laughs> And the short sound of the letter I is E. E. And what starts with E? Ink. Igloo. India. ये देखो क्या है पॉन्ड के अंदर. What is this? What is, What is this? आपको फिशी फिशी ये आती है क्या ना? ये नहीं तो राइम आती है. ये किसको आती है? क्यान? मछली. मैनेजिंग डायरेक्टर ऑफ शेमरॉक एंड शेमफर ग्रुप ऑफ स्कूल We've got many, many more such activities in our EduMax Learning Program. We've created an amazing learning program because we realize children are at home; they cannot come to school, and schools have the expertise to educate children. To overcome this, we've come up with an amazing program which requires minimum eye strain, which has no, virtually no eye strain. Children just look for communication; they do the activities. It's a full day program. There's so much for children to do, and what the best. Thing I can tell you is get a free trial version. Just call the number below and get a free trial version and see for yourself how amazing it is. I'm sure you'll love it. But for the first step, take a free trial, and we are confident that your child would love Edumax as much as we have loved designing it. Good luck. Okay. Good morning. How are you all doing? Okay. Now let's begin, my dear children. Okay. 